Hi everybody, uh, my name is Boris Kirchiev and I am uh, Chief Principal uh, Architect and Chief Ranger at Nirmata, the creators of Caverna. In a not so distant life, I actually work for Tetrate, who are the creators of Istio. Uh, today I will be talking to you about Zero Trust and how to hopefully start on your journey and marry the two projects together to accomplish a seamless uh, transition into it. Uh, let's dive right in. Uh, first and foremost, there's four pillars to Zero Trust. First, uh, trust is verification. Uh, certificates, workload identities, uh, all of these things should be the foundations of trust rather than IP addresses, which is kind of the more traditional thing or uh, subnets. Either way, level four uh, is no longer enough. Uh, the other big thing around trust uh, when it comes to zero trust is uh, authorization. Uh, and authorization extends to everything from service to service communications all the way to API operations. Next pillar is micro segmentation. Uh, think of them as network level firewalls, but on steroids. Uh, they're granular Kubernetes uh, resources that are we are able to uh, define and utilize. Uh, the big emphasis that micro segmentation places on is lateral reducing lateral movement in uh, the event, the inevitable event of a breach. The next uh, pillar is least privilege. The idea of need to know, even when internal components are uh, involved, uh, limits the attack surface of what an, you know, uh, a malicious user can and will um, be able to consume. And then because we are able to now integrate this with attribute-based uh, controls, uh, we are actually able to define a much more granular uh, structure for who can do what, when, how, uh, and thus limit the impact of any breaches. And finally, continuous monitoring. Uh, you, you know, we drown in logs and traces and everything else. Uh, however, telemetry is needed. Uh, everything from traffic to policies to policy actions to, uh, as I said, you know, regular tracing. Uh, we need that data in order to be able to focus on anomaly detection and threat pattern analysis. Okay, so why uh, does the cloud need zero trust at all? Um, first, as we're kind of moving away from the traditional uh, server based and even these days uh, further away from even containers, you know, uh, we now have spot instances, obviously containers. Uh, there have been a few talks over uh, the last day uh, and a half about serverless. That means that your assets are constantly shifting. The boundaries are constantly blurring, which opens up uh, the door for attack sophistication. The ultimate cat mouse game that we all have to play uh, as attacker tools and techniques evolve, uh, thus bypassing any traditional or currently standing defenses. Uh, a lot of the tooling that has existed so far has been predominantly um, very static, uh, let's put it that way. Um, and then Finally, because of uh, everything that we've discussed and just kind of the dynamic nature of it, uh, Zero Trust fits the operational model that we are all marching towards uh, as far as a cloud native architecture is concerned. 
because the security is baked in, right? Uh, everything is focused on creating identities and creating granular controls based on those identities uh, within a system. Um, but before we get you know a little too deep, uh, let's put an actual, you know, uh, why does this matter to me? Right. Uh, no matter how we slice it, defects cost money. Uh, whether it's money in the form of your time or money in the form of actual uh, breaches and ransomwares, etc. Uh, CNCF did a study a couple of years back and put actual numbers to this. Um, as you can see, it's not an insignificant number. And now think about how many clusters you have, how many apps you have, how many platforms you have, um, and multiply it by you know fifteen thousand, and I think we will all start crying. All right, so how do we solve you know start solving some of these problems? Uh, Istio and Kiverno is what I'm here to talk about, uh, and why I think that using them in conjunction uh, allows you to enhance your uh, posture and create zero trust within your environment. Uh, first and foremost, we have Istio. It is the cloud native networking security and observability tool. Uh, it decouples your control plane from your data plane, thus making policy management more accessible when it comes to uh, what we discussed earlier, uh, around how do I create service-to-service -service, uh, authorizations? How do I create, um, you know, granular a a back? Uh, and the nice thing, and it's kind of like the, and I'll discuss in a second, uh, the important thing out of Istio, out of the gate, is that you are uh, forced into an encrypted world. Um, you are forced into creating authorizations. Uh, you're forced into uh, thinking about your traffic. Now, I'm being a little uh, forceful here with the uh, word force, but it does both automate these things for you, but it gives you the knobs needed in order to create um, create the, the, the rules that, that, that we need. On the other hand, we have Kiverno. Uh, Kiverno is a Kubernetes native policy engine. It is built for security and compliance. Uh, we've all heard of the NIST 800 series, the NIST uh, 200 series. Um, you can now actually use Kiverno to apply those uh, standards uh, along with PCI, HIPAA, uh, you know, insert whatever compliance tool is the bane of your current existence. Uh, you can build the, the tools and um, deploy them. Uh, it's all declarative. It's all YAML based. I think at this point in our lives, we are all YAML jockeys, uh, no matter how much we want to get away from it. Um, but because it is all YAML based, it makes it very, very easy to uh, kind of keep your policy as code, which means that your policies can live uh, and understand kind of how your app works from the get-go. Uh, it gives it, uh, because it is webhook-based, uh, uh, we are able to validate uh, objects within the cluster, we can mutate the objects uh, within the cluster, and more importantly, we can generate new objects within the cluster based on relatively simple uh, syntax. All right, so uh, let's uh, dive into Istio. Uh, it is the ultimate zero trust network enforcer, right? Uh, first and foremost, when you install Istio, right out of the gate, you get MTLS. Uh, this is a pretty big win for everybody that I uh, worked with during my time uh, in Tetrate. 
because it gives you a certificate-based uh, authentication for every service instance. Uh, why is that important? Well, uh, not only do you get uh, encryption at rest and in transit, but you also get the uh, authorization uh, allowed uh, to be, or you, you get the ability to do your authorization based on uh, those certificates and using an identity, uh, a known identity with an expiry uh, on it uh, for these uh, rules. Uh, Istio does consolidate all the key management for you, which means that you know you can have uh, relatively fast-paced and automated key management or key rotation. Uh, and it auto or integrates with various cert authorities. So whether you're using AWS or GKE or uh, you're using VeriSign or you know whatever it may be, uh, you can integrate with this and quickly invalidate things, which means you can scope down any uh, any issues. Next, we have Istio, the traffic controller and authorizer, as I already mentioned. Uh, we want to decouple the identity from you know, IP ranges and subnets. Uh, we now have strong certificate-based workload identities, which are the basis for the authorization policies. The scales so much better. Um, once you, you know, once we are living into the kind of container serverless uh, world where pods appear, disappear, uh, can shift across globe uh, if we, we needed to, et cetera. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I've kind of been uh, talking about this, but authorization policies become very, very important. Uh, it is beyond a simple allow, deny, whitelist, blacklist. It gives us context and gives us the HTTP requests and gives us a much richer library of choices when we are building what should be able to come into a system, how, what, what kind of attributes does it need to carry in order to be permitted, etc. cetera. Uh, you know, uh, it also, because of these policies, we get back to uh, kind of what we discussed around the telemetry, and we are now able to, you know, have data. Uh, and if for some reason at any point uh, a read-only service decides to that it wants to do a delete, not only do we have that, but also, uh, hopefully, due to the, uh, to the kind of authorization policies, you will never be allowed to do that. Um, Furthermore, kind of beyond just security, uh, it gives you the ability to do canary uh, deployments. It gives you the ability to do circuit breaking. Um, but ultimately, how does it tie into zero trust? Uh, it limits the impact uh, of a compromised uh, a compromised service with the utilization of all of these tools. Uh, the other kind of big benefit is because the service mesh is generally can be very self-healing, uh, you can isolate uh, an incident site uh, without ever having to bring an entire uh, application down or bring your entire uh, cluster down. All right, what about Caverno? Right, um, security and compliance. Uh, first and foremost, it is all declarative. Uh, policies have the same format as your regular manifests. Uh, they are extremely readable, which means the non-YAML jockeys can also learn to write YAML. Yay, more of us. Uh, we are ab able to shift away from like. Uh, complex scripting languages uh, to an easily git versioned policies, which then opens up the ability for us to do to shift down uh, and also audit the reason why certain policy exists, why certain policy exceptions might exist, etc. Uh, and also know the state of the world at the time that that policy was put in place. 
uh, as far as policy scope, it is everything from CRD to uh, namespaces to cluster wise to Git repositories. Uh, this is important because you write these rules once and you can apply them uh, at any level that you need. <clears throat> All right, furthermore, uh, validation and mutation are super, super important. Uh, it means that um, we are enforcing, uh, validation means that we are enforcing policies that we write uh, on a resource that is created or updated already on the system, uh, which means that like, no matter how many times you try to edit a deployment and misconfigure it or edit a daemon set or edit a staple set or edit some sort of resource within a Kubernetes cluster, uh, the policy will automatically deny those changes uh, for you. On the other hand, we have mutation, which means that like on the fly, we can mutate existing resources. So, uh, for some reason you're missing uh sidecars you're missing the istio sidecar or you're missing specific labels that you need in order to pass uh, uh whatever data that, that, that you're requiring uh or you want to create uh deny all uh kind of network policy stance uh from the get-go and build from there all of this can be done with a mutating webhook and again the all of this lives in a yaml file which is extremely simple to kind of generate and read and follow all right but beyond all of this uh, we're able to do actual generation of new resources and we're not limited to just what's built into kubernetes it will understand any crds that live on your cluster which is extremely extremely powerful um uh, as we mentioned earlier, you can add missing labels. Based on those labels, you can now create network policies. Uh, that is a separate talk, uh, but I have an example repository out there that kind of does exactly that. Uh, offloads your, uh, your bits to Kiverno and auto-generates the resources needed. Uh, but beyond that, you know, yesterday we had a talk about S-bombs uh, and, you know, uh, what they, why they're important. Uh, you can now actually do image verification and thus shift your supply chain security uh, further down the chain uh, and deny images that you know contain vulnerabilities. Uh, we were joking about XZ yesterday, but like I just published a, uh, an article specifically addressing XZ and how you can uh, very quickly, with the help of S bombs, um, or without outside of the uh, prevent the prevent the vulnerability from occurring on your systems. All right, uh, telemetry and, and logging. As I said, we need more of it. Any which way you slice it, we just need it. Um, I'm not saying that we are, as an industry, doing a good job of properly utilizing the amount of data that we generate, um, but we still need that data in order to be able to do pattern analysis. Uh, we need to be able to do, you know, policy violation uh, responses. We need to have audit logs uh, for compliance reasons, et cetera. All right, so let's talk about, um, you know, what, what does it mean? Like, how do I tie all this together? Um, Funnily enough, I wrote this, you know, uh, slide before XZ had existed, but supply chain, let's imagine, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, an attacker injects malicious code into a third party dependency as it happened. Uh, the code then attempts some lateral movement. Uh, with zero trust and utilizing the two projects together, you can now limit through MTLS and through the authorization policies, uh, the exposure of the services that are uh, being affected and that are potentially being compromised. Uh, using Converno, we can restrict the uh, 
network level access um, by cording automatically cording off uh, whether it's the segments uh, of the service mesh that exists or just flat out segmenting out an entire node or a region, etc. Um, because the attack is trying to access the file system, Kiberno will block this because we are not allowing, say, host path volumes uh, to be utilized and to access, and we're not allowing to add capabilities to uh, uh, to the container. And then finally, combining Istio and Kiverno's telemetry and audit logs, we can now quickly kind of track down where the issue is, why is it happening, uh, etc. All right, we're nearly there. Uh, Istio and Kiverno, right? The marriage, uh, everything that I've been talking about. Ultimately, you will use Istio to control the network. And then you will use Kiverno to enforce the security and best practices within said network. Uh, the combined enrichment of data and enrichment of context um, between the two allow you to know who, what, why, and if it's missing, when things happen within the network and within your application, within your stack. Um, you're actually able to prove, you know, a lot of people say, oh yeah, we are using zero trust and you talk to them and they're like, oh, well, really what I meant is we're running, <laughs> um, we are running air gapped. Well, uh, that's not really, uh, zero trust now, is it? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so through, uh, Kiverno reports and Istio configs, you can actually prove that you are indeed running in uh, a zero trust mode. All right, uh, in summary, as you start on your zero trust journey, start with uh, a critical workload or something that is high value. Um, nobody cares if you get guest book app uh running in or booking full app running as a service mesh uh and secured right everybody cares about their high value uh target app uh you know use it to uh learn to to learn and to understand how both the service mesh works but also how uh, Kiverno uh, works by augmenting and changing uh, changing rules within uh, the system. Uh, keep keep iterating, right? Um, keep iterating by granularly rolling out the policies that will define your zero zero trust posture within a cluster. And the beauty of the of the kind of combining Kiverno and Istio is that. Um, it is not a lift and shift, but you can actually very gradually roll through and spread through an entire uh, kind of population of clusters. And, you know, uh, learn how to sift through the tons of data that we generate. Uh, look through the telemetry, look through intelligence fees, look through policies, you know, keep checking on these things. And with that, I have a reach the end. I hope you found this informative and I will see you on the other side.